pictures and flashing and no cell phones. And other than that, you don't have to think about the cameras, just we're having church in here. Right? And it is miracle healing tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lift up your hands and praise God. Oh, thank you, sing it, God. same yesterday, today, today, and forever, and it's healing tonight. Glory to God. I'm Keith Moore. This is my wonderful wife, Phyllis Moore, and this is Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri, and we're so delighted tonight to be on TBN. Oh, thank God for Brother Paul and Miss Jan Crouch and the big TBN family and all the partners that make all these broadcasts possible. We're going into 87 countries of the world now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is wonderful. And the thing that's just coursing through our spirits and through our minds tonight is that God still heals. He still does miracles. Yes. So if you're watching there and you know somebody that needs to be healed and they don't know about this, call them. Yes. Say, hey, get that channel on TBN. Get ready. Yes. Get your faith stirred up. Tonight's the night Tonight. to receive. Tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we have some wonderful guests tonight, yes, Phyllis. We, we have do. got, let me tell you about them. We got Brother Richard and Miss Lindsay Roberts. Yes, glory to oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We got Miss Dodie Osteen here yes, tonight. Hallelujah. Glory from Houston. To God. Oh, praise God. Wonderful healing testimony. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. We got Dino and Cheryl Kartsanakis right here from yes. Branson, Missouri. 
Blessed be God. We got special music by Miss Ann Durant. We got special music by Ray Jean Wilson. We got special music, hallelujah, by Steve and Candy LaFlora and the Faith Life Singers. Glory to God. It's on tonight. Glory to God. And don't forget you. Oh, yeah. And you. I'm going to be preaching some too. Yeah. Hallelujah. And We're some ca- wonderful testimonies. Oh, that's right. You've got testimonies yes. lined up for us. I've, I've, I've seen some of them. Outstanding things. They're going to be coming. Individuals telling, giving glory to God yes. about what seemed impossible, what seemed like it was too late and too far gone. But how many know with God, nothing is too difficult. Whoa, Nothing's to too hard. So stir your faith up. Let it rise up to the sky tonight. Don't That thing you've been waiting to believe for, don't wait any longer. Tonight's the night. Tonight. Yes. Now listen, things are going to be progressing. Things are going to be building. But don't think you have to wait until a later point in the service. The healing anointing is flowing right now. Yes. And as people sing, you can be healed. Singing is ministry. Yes. The anointing, the healing anointing is on these people to play and to sing. Don't think, well, i got to wait. Maybe something's going to happen later. No. When the anointing is there and you sense it in your spirit, you just believe you receive wow. right then. Yes. You can receive on the first song right now. Yes. Guys, are you all ready to sing for us? Yes. Hallelujah. Sing. Take it away. Hallelujah.
awesome God who deserves all glory, who deserves all the honor, who is so good. God tonight, Lord, we worship you. Oh, we do give you glory, Lord. There is no one like you. We worship you, the almighty God, the great healer God. Oh, we worship the miracle worker. We worship the healer of every disease we worship oh we worship we 
worship you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many believe He is great? Great is the Lord our God. Greatly to be praised. And He does miracles so great. I tell you, all night tonight you're going to be saying, great. Oh, that's great. Oh, that is great. Great. And who did it? Our great God does great things. Hallelujah. Turn around, look at somebody, smile real big, say great. Great. God is great. Maybe somebody could use a hug tonight. Say bless you. Good to see you. Good to be with you in church. Hallelujah. You can be seated once you, once you've done that. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad to be in church tonight? Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time. You happy about that too? Hallelujah. Look with me in, uh, First Timothy, the, Fifth chapter, real quickly, if you got your Bible there handy and ready. First Timothy 5. How many believe in sowing and reaping? And how many have found out it is the way to live? Not just something you do once in a while, but it's your way of life. And if you want to step up to the next level, what should you be thinking about? Stepping up in your sowing, Right? Because if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully and generously and bigger, then you reap bountifully and generously and bigger. Listen to this scripture here in uh, 1 Timothy 5, 17. It says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Not just honor, but what? double, especially they who labor in the Word and doctrine. Can you think over your life of people that God used to bring the good news to you and the Word that brought your faith up? And Is your life different now because of that? Don't you thank God for those, those people, those men and those women? And like the Scripture said, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring the good news He went on to say, verse 18, For the Scripture said, You shall not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Well, the the mule or the ox that's treading the corn, what did he say? They're in the corn. They're helping get the corn in. So what's he saying? Let them eat some corn. Don't put the muzzle on them. Let them eat. And the laborer, you don't just work them, but you also pay them. Right? The laborer is worthy of his hire. Well, I have it on my heart that the entire offering tonight should go to our guest speakers and our guest singers. What do you think about that? Does that suit you good? I think that would be right. We'll be sowing seed. They're going to be ministering to us, and God's used them. And, and, and so many of you have been enriched already so tremendously through their ministries over the years. And so we want to sow back. And so this entire offering tonight is going towards that. So, hallelujah. Ushers, would you take the aisle and wait on the people? You want to sow by cash this evening? Raise your hand and take an envelope and fill it out for the cash. If you're giving by check, you don't have to have an envelope. We have your information on the check. But check should be made to Faith Life Church. I'll make all the checks to Faith Life Church. And I'll assure you, every penny will go to our guests and then some. Hallelujah. But make your checks out to Faith Life Church. And you don't have to designate it because all of it tonight is going to our guests. And when you sow, what can you look forward to after that? Harvest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You help somebody else get paid well, then uh, you're going to reap getting paid well. Yourself, everything produces after its own kind. So checks made out to Faith Life Church, 
And uh, if you're giving by cash, take an envelope. If you didn't get into what, hold your hand up. We don't want to miss you. If you're watching by internet, you want to get in on this, there's a uh, button that says contribution. You can get in on this. Your offering will go to the guests as well. Phyllis, would you come and, and bring our offering, please? And Everybody, when you got yours ready, go ahead and stand. And when we give, we ought not just be looking at uh, people, but we give to the Lord. So everybody, whether you're sowing or not, everybody stand and uh, worship God with us. Hold up your, your offering before the Lord. Hallelujah. Said out loud, Father God, Father we, worship we worship you with our giving. We sow good seed in the good ground. We pray these ministers would be refreshed and renewed, blessed. We desire that they prosper more and more in every realm. And so we release this seed in the good ground and we claim a big harvest. In Jesus' name, name. amen. Amen. Hallelujah, you can be seated. Praise God. Ushers, wait on the people. Guys, go ahead and sing for us if you would as they receive. tonight oh I'm telling you no sickness no disease is safe tonight now if you want to keep it you might want to leave now because I'm telling you the anointing is increasing and getting stronger and the anointing destroys every yoke removes every burden no matter how long it's been that way Hallelujah. Well, I want to uh, uh, introduce to some folk that don't know them. Most people do know them, especially the TBN family knows these fine folk. Dino and Cheryl, would y'all come on up, please? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, these folks, hallelujah, are no strangers to the uh, TBN family. This is our church. Exactly, yeah. And, and the church. 
This is our church. Hallelujah. We are so excited about that. Hallelujah. Is that, is that mic on? Yeah. Check one, too. Yeah, yes. great, great, great. Uh, I just wanted to say just a word. I mean, uh, y'all are part of this wonderful family, yes. and we're friends. And, yes. But uh, I have watched the anointing increase on these people in the last uh, three years. I'm telling you, and they've been in uh, wonderful churches and ministries all over the country and uh, just got to minister at Carnegie Hall, yes. hallelujah, not long ago. Amen. Lifelong Amen. dream. Amen. Yeah, that's something God did. Yes, he did. And, uh, <laughs> but something that they've been seeing uh, increasingly yes. is healing. Yes. As, uh, as Brother Dino plays, you remember how David would play on the harp and the anointing would come Amen. and people would be delivered and healed. And that's been happening yes. as Dino sings and, excuse me, as Dino plays. I can sing too. Yeah, don't yeah, you? yeah, okay. <laughs> We're going to keep you playing. I'll, leave, I'll let Cheryl sing. And as Cheryl sings. Now, now Cheryl can sing. <laughs> Cheryl can sing. Dino can play. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. But anyway, we're excited tonight. I believe the anointing is going to come strong on you now as you play and as you sing. And get ready, guys, yes. for healing. If you're hurting in your body right now, you don't have to Hallelujah. wait a moment further because as, as Dino's hands come on these Hallelujah. keys, the anointing is going to flow through this, through this instrument. And as Cheryl sings, the anointing flows. Get ready to receive healing. Pastor, I want to now. say something. Go ahead. I'd like ahead. to say something, and that is, First of all, we appreciate your teaching. Oh, yes. And yes, we've been oh, coming here for three years. So great. I've got to say this. You cannot help but grow spiritually and, and, and uh, be under the anointing when you're under a ministry such as this, Hallelujah. your faith life. Good. And God has brought you and your lovely wife, Phyllis, to Branson, Missouri. To, be, to minister, not only locally, but now around the world. Yeah, hallelujah. It's around the world. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We were praying for you to come. Yeah. Yes. We'd been praying for a long time, and God finally sent hallelujah. you. Yeah. Now, I know you I know you heard him, and you were led at the proper time, and we're so grateful. But aren't we grateful and thankful in this church body that the, the Moors are here? Oh, we're so blessed, and we praise the Lord praise for so much. Praise and already God. the healing power, already the healing power has come yes. down. I'm telling you, I came here, and I haven't told you this, Pastor, but uh, my back has been bothering me. Mm -hmm. For how long? Oh, a couple of months. And I have not just been praying, and, we're and I, on the way over to this, there's such faith and such power yeah. on this property huh. that I, I have received my healing Praise tonight. Praise God. <laughs> how I mean, I really have. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. And the same power that healed me is about to heal. Yes. Thousands and thousands yes, of people around the world. Yes. As you play, Hallelujah. as you sing. Okay. Hallelujah. Go, go, go ahead. Hallelujah. Go for it. All yes. right. <laughs> I don't Thanks. want to wait any longer. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So ladies and gentlemen, those that are here in this auditorium, those who are watching by television around the world, every all these nations in every language, I'm here to say that there is power in the name of the Lord.
in the name of the Lord. Come on, give him praise right now. He gets honor, glory. There's power. There's healing in the name of the Lord. Healing. Woo! It's exciting. It's not like even me playing tonight. I'll tell you, the presence of the Holy Spirit is so powerful here this evening. A song that I've played for many years. You probably have heard me play this on television many, many times. As most of you know, I, I ministered with one of the greatest evangelists, I believe, and that was Catherine Kuhlman. Years ago, when she'd asked me to play the piano in her services, her favorite song was... Cherie was in her first semester at ORU. She was sitting in chapel one morning and she leaned over to her roommate and she said, I don't feel too well. I'm going to slip out. And her roommate looked after her and followed her and found her collapsed in the ladies' room. They rushed her to City of Faith Hospital, diagnosed her with multiple sclerosis. They called us and Dino immediately put me on the plane and when I walked into her room, I said with a mother's broken heart, I said, honey, how are you, honey? She said, Mom, God did not do this to me, but he's going to get glory from it. And I have to tell you tonight, the testimony in my heart rings true. We began to pray, and many of you prayed too. And she's completely whole, healed by the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he can do it for you right now. The same that he did for Cherie, he will do for you if you believe it. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. This life is worth the living just because he lives. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. I know the joy that floods my soul. Oh, 
rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He will quench you and make you whole. Oh, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let many, many times, many people have been healed as you sang this song, as you ministered through this song. And I know this is a little out of order, but I felt the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to me to have you come up. And Pastor, I hope you don't mind, but can you minister to us right now? I I started to turn to Lindsay when you finished that song, a testimony, I should say, the testimony of your daughter. There is an anointing right there. You knew it. Uh, that moment for healing. Stretch your hands out right now in Jesus' name. Just let my hand be a point of contact to you tonight. The Bible says that he worked through the hands of the disciples. Now, that doesn't mean that we're one of the 12, but we are one of the millions, aren't we, around the world. So if he worked through Peter's hands, if he worked through Paul's hands, if he worked through John's hands, he'll work through our hands. And the scripture also says in Psalm 107.20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You watching by television tonight, there's no distance in prayer. God's right here where we are in Branson, Missouri. He's right there where you are, no matter where you are, in your home, if you're in a hotel, uh, if you're in a bar tonight, he's right there where you are. And he's sending his word. So, Father, in the authority of Jesus' mighty name, I thank you that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you're there and you're here tonight and you're right there where my friend is watching this program. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I set my faith with Cheryl, with Dino, with everyone here tonight. And in Jesus' name, I send the word to you. I rebuke this sickness and disease. Now, their shoulders getting healed right now. Hallelujah. And right here tonight in Branson, many of you getting your shoulder healed right now. Whoever you are, just begin to move your shoulder right now. Their backs being healed right now in Jesus' name. Uh, you who have varicose veins, somebody's getting healed of varicose veins right now. Someone's being healed of a broken heart at this moment. TMJ is being healed right now. There's a, there, yes, thank you, Lord. There's a deafness. It's leaving a left ear and someone else's right ear right now. And there are cataracts that are dissolving right now. As we lift up that name, which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I send his word to you. Satan, in the name of Jesus, you take your hands off God's property. You loose every man, and you loose every woman, and you loose every young person watching us tonight on TBN. Thank God for a network where the power of God can go forth uninhibited in the authority of Jesus' name. Lift your hands and give him praise tonight. I send the word to you tonight. I believe God for your healing. And I set my faith with you in Jesus' name. I'm not taking no for an answer. I believe in his mighty name for it to be done, and it's being done in people right now. Check yourself. Examine yourself. Go to your telephone. Call the TBN prayer line and give a word of testimony. Give uh, give a praise uh, to the Lord, even as they call. Cheryl, God bless you. Dino. God bless you. Woo! Woo! Power in this place. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, if you uh, if you're really going to have a healing service, you got to have a Holy Ghost service. Right. You have to because he is the healer. Hallelujah. Oh, we're so honored. You just saw uh, Dino and Cheryl and, and Brother Richard and, and, and got the Holy Ghost here tonight. But right now, I'd like to introduce to the platform wonderful woman of God, uh, elder in the body of Christ, uh, her and, and Brother John Osteen, founder of that wonderful church in Houston, Lakewood, that has ex- exploded under the pastorship of their son. 
Would you please come, Miss Dodie Osteen? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mic on. Going to check it. (coughs) Miss Doty, we are so honored that you're here with us tonight. And uh, we know that uh, there are many, many things that God has done through you and your ministry. Yep. We're ready. <laughs> <clears throat> and there's so many things you could speak to us about tonight. But when I spoke to you over the phone, something you said stuck with me. You said, uh, Brother Keith, I owe my life to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And how that you had gotten a bad report. And here you are tonight full of life, healthy, strong, serving Jesus. Would you speak to us for a few minutes tonight? Yes. Praise the Lord. Would you be seated, please? I'm so thrilled to be here. It's so wonderful. The people are so wonderful to me. And I'm just so thankful for what Jesus has done in my life. You know, I do owe my life to Jesus because in 1981, I was diagnosed with metastatic cancer of the liver. I had a tumor the size of an orange and two almond-sized tumors, and the doctors gave me a few weeks to live. They said, Pastor, you need a miracle, and John said, Doctor, we'll get a miracle. Now, there's a story in the book of Jeremiah about a lady who had seven sons who died in battle. They were all killed in battle, and the Bible says it seemed like her son went down while it was yet day. Do you know at that time in our lives, it seemed like my son had gone down when it was yet day, that the sun would never rise again, that it was a dark time in my life. It was a dark time in my husband's life. I was 48 years old. I was just beginning to get all the children out, four of them in ORU, one uh, going the next year or two, and I was going to be able to travel with John. 48 years old and given a few weeks to live. And I was devastated, and my family was devastated, and I knew that my only hope was in the Lord Jesus. They said chemo might or may not help. It would not prolong my life. So John just decided to take me home, and we went home on that afternoon of December 10th, 1981. I weighed 89 pounds. I was jaundiced. I I was weak. But I went home, and I didn't go to bed because I didn't want to act sick. Now, I felt sick. So this will encourage you that are watching us by television You don't go by symptoms. I know sometimes it's awfully hard to keep on going, but the Word of God says, with long life He satisfies me. It says, I will restore health unto you and heal of your wounds. So I took God's Word to heart. The next day, John and I got on our faces in our bedroom, and He commanded the cancer to go for me. You know, Jesus spoke to the fig tree. It withered and died. It bore fruit no longer, and it didn't grow any longer. And so that's what we did. We spoke to the cancer in my our, my body. We said, I command you to wither and die and leave her body, John said, bear fruit no longer. Well, you know what? The cancer did just exactly what he commanded it to. The cancer bowed to the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Thank you, my father. Now, it was not an instantaneous healing. I had to, to walk through it But I knew that with the help of the Lord Jesus, I knew he was my only hope. And David said, "My God is my constant hope. I knew that as long as Jesus was alive, I had hope. And Jesus would never, never, ever leave us nor forsake us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never will change. People change. Seasons change. Things change. But Jesus never, never does. And I'm so glad for that. Praise the Lord. So what I did, I just began to act like I was well. I went to church and prayed for people when I could hardly stand. I didn't even feel like standing up praying. First time I ever went back, Richard, John had to pull me up the stairs. I was so weak. But you know what? I just stood on the Word of God. I said, Jesus, I don't want to die. My children need me. My family needs me. My mother and daddy need me. My husband needs me. My people need me. My church needs me. So I stood on the Word of God. And I got a list of, of scriptures on healing. 
Let me tell you, find the place where it's written. Stand on the Word of God. I read those scriptures every day. It has been 24 years now. That's a lot longer than a few weeks, don't you think? 24 years, and every day of the world since then, I have read those healing scriptures. I have about 58 healing scriptures, Pastor, and I read them every day of the world. I don't leave. It's like the American Express. I don't leave home without it. And I'm telling you, if I have to catch an airplane at 6 in the morning, I'm reading my healing scriptures at 4.30 because i got to keep this word. This is medicine to me. So I want to encourage you, if you're watching us by television, find the place where it's written. Get you some scriptures. Get your healing scriptures if you need them. Scriptures on your needs supplied, on children that are not serving God. Find the place where it's written and stand on that word, and God will honor his word. He'll hasten his word to perform it. You know, it was the most wonderful thing how Jesus just touched me and healed me. And I was so glad that that he gave me. I asked him at that time for an extra 25 or 30 years. Well, it's been 24, so I have since asked him for more years. (laughs) I just had my 72nd birthday in October, and I thought, Jesus, I want at least till 90 or longer. If you tarry, I sort of doubt that he tarries. But you know what? I just want to live, and I want to just keep on praying for people because Jesus is my life. I owe my life to him as so many of you do. Listen, in Matthew, in in the Message Bible, Matthew 5, 3 says, when you're you're blessed, when you're at the end of your rope. Did you know I was at the end of my rope? Uh, um, I I was. I was hanging on to life. But it says you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God. Did you know when you're at the end of the rope, you just have to trust in the Lord Jesus. God can do what men can't do. And I just stood on the word of God and my husband was so good. My children were so good. Now, let me tell you, I I wavered some. You think, well, you know, did you not ever wait? I'm human. I waver just like you do sometimes. But you know what? I stood on hold fast your confession of of faith without wavering. Hebrews 10, 23. And I said to John one day, Richard, I said, John, my mind is wavering. I am wavering in my heart. I don't want to die with long life, and I'm wavering. And he said, Dodie, is it your mind wavering or is it your heart wavering? I said, my heart is steadfastly confident that Jesus would never let me die. So it was my mind that was wavering. So the devil will come against you with thoughts, but you rebuke those thoughts and replace it with a scripture. And I walked down the driveway. My daughter Tamara's here, and I walked down the driveway. To, it was a long way to get our mail. And I said, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. I quoted the word of God. I screamed at the devil. I did everything that I knew to do. I prayed for other people. And listen, let me tell you one of the biggest things that I think I did that helped me. It may, may have not even been known to the other person, but I asked people to forgive me. I got up in the middle of the night and I wrote letters to people that I thought maybe I had been harsh to or something. I wrote my children letters and I said, I haven't felt well. I'm sorry if I have not been a good mother. I wrote my mother and daddy. I wrote my husband. I wrote everybody that I knew to, to, to ask them to forgive me. You know, do what you can. When you're fighting to live, do what you can. You remember when Jesus went to the tomb to heal Lazarus? He said, you roll away the stone. You do something. You do whatever you can do. If it takes forgiveness, if you're watching us us on television and you need to forgive somebody, be quick to do it. If you need to get bitterness out of your heart, be quick to do it because Jesus will bless you if you do that. And I wrote these letters, and it didn't even make any difference to them. They didn't even know what I was talking about. But anyway, it cleared my heart. It cleared my heart. It made me feel like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And let me tell you some things that are really important to do, I think. First of all, know it's the will of God for you to be healed. People think Jesus punishes us, Jesus sends sickness. And we did that for a long time because we were denominational people. When, when I first married, we, we didn't know. We weren't sure it was God's will to heal. We... We'd go to the hospital and say, Father, if it's true, we'll heal him. Well, I know it's God's will to heal because the devil is the one who's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God, but God, thank God for but God. But Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And we love our children. We would not punish them because we love them too much. So Jesus loves us. So establish in your heart that it's God's will for you to be healed. You know, the leper came to Jesus. He said, Master, if it's your will, Jesus said, most certainly it's my will. I not only want to do it, I can do it. Jesus is willing and he is able. Thank God for that. Pray in faith, believing. You may think, well, I don't have faith enough to believe for that. 
Did you know that everybody's given a measure of faith? But then when you hear the Word of God and hear it over and over and over, if you're not in a good church, get in a good church. Find the place where it's written. Go to church. Hear the Word of God talk. I, sometime when we were on tour, I hear Gerald's sermons six times. I get so tired of hearing them, but I learn something new every time. So you, faith cometh by hearing. By the sixth time, I've got a lot of faith. Faith cometh by hearing. You can never hear too much of the Word of God. And faith will grow. Now, mustard seed is one of the tiniest of seeds. But then when it's planted, it grows. It groweth, the Bible says, and it becometh. So as you grow in the Word of God, your faith will come more and more. And then he says in this big old plant or tree or whatever mustard seed becomes, it says then that the birds come and nest in it. So your faith will grow as you hear the Word of God taught. Find those scriptures like I told you. But find the place where it's written. Do what you can. And listen, let me tell you what. Did you know when Naaman the leper, a, a military man, a good man, but he didn't like the instructions that Elijah gave him he, to go dip in the river Jordan seven times. He thought, this is ridiculous. I've got places close to my house I could dip in. He was really annoyed. But you know what? God's ways are better than our ways. You may think your way is the best, but God's way are, ways are the best. And so when he did what God told him to do, then Jesus healed him and his skin was like baby skin. Thank God for that. Other people, uh, as, as I mentioned about Lazarus, they moved the stone and then Lazarus came forth. The blind man, everybody that did what Jesus asked them to, to got healed. Now let me tell you two of my, my favorite stories about pe people that get healed. One of them is about the paralyzed man that couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd. I think that's the sweetest story, that four people brought him on a mat. Just think about that. They wanted, they knew that Jesus was there to heal, so they brought him on a mat, and they couldn't get in. So you know what they did? Now, how many people would do this for us? They got up on that roof, on that clay roof, and dug out a hole and went to all that trouble to let him down. And you know what Jesus said? It says, when Jesus said, when they saw how strongly they believed. Would you say how strongly they believed? When he saw how strongly they believed, you know what he did? He said, pick up that mat and go home. To the paralyzed man, Jesus sees your faith. I think the fav my favorite story in the whole Bible about healing is that the little lady that had had an issue of blood 12 years. Now, only a lady would know what that would be to bleed for 12 years. She has had exhausted all the money she had. She'd done everything that she knew to do. The doctors couldn't help her, and doctors are wonderful, but God can do what men can't. Everybody say that. God can do what men can. Sometimes doctors can't do anymore, but God can. And that's when God takes over. When him, we just let him have our lives and let him have whatever's wrong with us. God will take over if we have faith to believe. And so this little lady with the issue of blood said, if I could just get to him, if I could touch Jesus. You know, if I heard Jesus was three miles over there, a block away, and I knew I could get to him and I was in that condition, I would crawl there, wouldn't you? So she crawled to the Lord Jesus just to touch his, the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? And then everybody said, Master, how could we tell you who touched? There are so many people here. But he knew. See, he, he, that little lady's faith drew Jesus toward him. And it, it says in Luke 8 in the Message Bible, it says, Daughter, you took a risk touching me, and, and uh, you have, now you're blessed, and you made, are made whole. Go in faith. Oh, in peace. Jesus said, you took a risk. She went up to him. She deliberately touched him. One of the Bibles, uh, the uh, version says, she deliberately touched him. Do you know you have to deliberately touch Jesus when you want something from him? Deliberately touch him. She touched the hem of his garment. I think that's the sweetest thing. She touched him, and Jesus just said, be made whole. Be made whole. She, he did that for nothing. And listen to what the Bible says in the Living Bible. It said, when she touched him, sure enough, he made her whole. Sure enough, she knew when she touched him, sure enough, she was going to be whole. So I encourage you to rem remember those words. When you ask for Jesus, ask something for, from Jesus, sure enough, know that you're going to get it. And let me tell you what Hosea says. Hosea 6 says, let us press on to know him. When you believe in God for something, you press on to know him. Press on for whatever you believe in for, God for. He likes you to ask. He delights in answering the prayers of his children. 
Just like we delight in doing things for our children, he delights in answering the prayers of the children. He wants you to ask him for things. He wants you to ask in faith believing. He wants you to ask according to his will. Let us press on to know him. You have to know him. You have to know his will in order to know how to pray effectively. But let us press on to know him and he will... Uh, now, let me see. I can't even read my own writing. And we, he will surely respond to us. That's the word. I'm trying to find it. And he will sp- respond to us as surely, as surely, everybody say as surely. as surely. As you press on to touch him, he will respond to us as surely, listen to this, as the coming of dawn. Can anybody stop dawn from coming in the morning? No weapon, no machinery, no scientist can stop the sun from coming in the morning, dawn from coming in the morning. He will respond to you as surely as the coming of dawn or as the rain in early spring. In April, whenever it begins to rain, the rain's going to come. Nobody is going to stop it. He will respond to you as surely as the coming of dawn. Just remember, the sun, it may seem like the sun has set in the daytime, but it hasn't. It is going to come up in the morning. The dawn is going to come up in the morning. The rain is going to come up in early spring. Sure enough, it will happen because Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. I am so thankful to the Lord Jesus to be alive 24 years after the doctors gave me a few weeks to live. And here I am, maybe good for, I'm believing good for another 24 years. And all the people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <coughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, let's thank Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, we are so thankful that you're still the healer. You're still the Almighty One. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. You can be seated. Does that bless your heart? I'm telling you. Now that's, uh, Brother, Brother Hagen, my father in the faith, used to say all the time, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Well, there you go. Right? Healed 24 years and such wonderful, practical way to walk. You heard how she walked it out. And the Lord's no respect to persons. If you do what Miss Doty did, you'll be healed. Hallelujah. And you'll live and not die. Right? Well, God is no respect to persons, and we have some other good testimonies right now. Is that right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Did I understand correctly that you went to the doctor's funeral the other day that told you that you would only have two weeks to live? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought I understood somebody to tell me the other day. The doctor that told her that she only had two weeks to live, she got to go to his funeral the other day. So isn't that a testimony? (laughs) Glory to God. So we have some more testimonies for you guys tonight. Are y'all enjoying this tonight? Glory to God. Well, this first testimony, I wanted to do it because it is, it witnessed to me about us going out across TV land and people think if they cannot have someone there laying their hands upon them then they cannot receive but this will minister to you because this lady was not here in our service but she was out in tv land or in camera land and god ministered to her and i want you to hear what happened to her i'm on two microphones holding two which one am i using okay here she'll use this one and i'll use this one so uh this is miss lynn reinbrandt and she's going to tell you what happened to her after a service we had here one friday night so go ahead miss lynn May i just tell one other quick miracle sure no one except for my son and my kids know that this woman was a power and a tower of faith to me through my journey. And besides Jesus and my husband, she's my hero in the faith. Glory to God. So um, actually, a quick history. Four and a half years ago, I too was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, stage four, and told that there was no chance of survival after they did the surgery. I was too full of tumors. And so um, we acted on the word, and we acted as though it were true, and we stood on God's word. And here I am today. 
Here she is today. Well, the reason I gave you that history is because you know, have to know the significance of the healing that I received through this ministry. The first place that ovarian cancer goes is to the breast. A few weeks ago, ago I went for a mammogram. I get, received a call on Thursday evening that they had found something in the left breast and that the radiologists, the doctors wanted me to come in on Monday for a diagnostic mammogram. That Friday night, as usual, we were watching Faith Life Church, attending via internet, and Miss Phyllis was up giving testimonies, and Brother Keith came up to the microphone and he said that he had a word of knowledge from the Lord that there was someone that was being healed, and there may be several, he said, whether you're here in the service or you're watching via internet. And he the, called out tumors specifically. He called out tumors and specifically growth. and growth. And I just knew that he was speaking to me. And he said, what I want you to do is put your hand on that tumor or growth. I want you to reach your other hand toward me if you're watching by internet. And I want you to believe with us because Jesus is here to heal right now, right where you are. So I did that. My husband put his hands on me. And we just believed with Brother Keith and Miss Phyllis and, and knew that Jesus was present right where we were. And I went for a mammogram that Monday, and the, the technologist said, I want you to see what we're dealing with. So she held up the mammogram. There was a white spot about the size of a quarter on the um, slide. And she said to me, we need to get a better picture of this, and darling little gal. And so she w took the mammogram, went to the doctor. She told me, you sit here. Doctor wants to talk to you. So I, so I sat there, and she, she came back a few minutes later, and she said, I do not get good slide. I need to do another one. So she took another one, and then she said, you sit here. Doctor wants to talk to you. So I sat there, and she came back a few minutes later, and she said, you may go home now. <laughs> There's no tumor, no growth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, isn't that a testimony? And she was not here in the service. She got it by laying her and her husband, laying their hands on her and received it across the Internet and across the uh, TV land. So you out there in TV land, you can receive the same thing tonight. Whenever they, they, what they just did and prayed for you across, you can receive whatever they called out. It's yours out there. So uh, and this is Miss Nora, and she's going to give you her testimony. Good evening. Um, August of 2004. Hold, hold the mic up. Better? August of 2004, I had a routine mammogram, and they called me and said they found two lumps, one in each breast. Immediately, my husband, Larry, took authority over it, and we prayed, and we stood on the word. I was healed. By his stripes, I was healed. A week later, I went in. I saw the films. I saw them. And the doctor says, well, you know, let me do a, a physical. So he did that, and he went, hmm, hmm, well, hmm, let's get some more. If you've ever had a mammogram, ladies, I had eight more. I was turned upside down almost. Well, he said, sit in the waiting room. I waited, and a peace came over me, and I knew it was Jesus. And there was other people in the, in the waiting room, and they went into the office to see the doctor to get their results. But the doctor came out to me, and he said, he seemed confused, and he says, well, I they're not there. They're disappeared. Well, I was not confused. I stood up and said, thank you, Jesus. Yes. I ran out. God. I ran out of the hospital. I didn't stop at the nurse's station to check out, which you know you're supposed to do. And I do believe angels drove me home that day because I don't remember the trip at all. Glory at to all. God. Yes. Glory to God. And I give all the glory to God because... Satan had a plan, but he didn't have a place. Jesus is master and Lord of my life. Devil, zero. Loser. Loser. Yeah, yeah. Go. Yes. Glory Woo! to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Tumor's you, Jesus. gone. Thank Tumor's you. gone. Glory to God. Yes. Thank you, Miss Nora. Okay, Samantha, you guys come on up here. This is Samantha and Paul, and they're going to give you a testimony about Paul and what happened to him. Good evening. And Paul's going to talk for us, too. When Paul was about one and a half years old, uh, we woke up one morning and I noticed something was a little wrong with his skin color. And within a matter of moments, uh, his lips turned blue and purple and his fingernails turned blue and purple. Um, very quickly, of course, we were admitted to the ER. They had 
lots of equipment waiting for us. He was diagnosed with SVT, which is a heart condition. His heart rate was over 300 beats a, moment, a minute. Um, let's fast forward a couple of years. He was jumping on the bed, and on one of his landings, he missed. And uh, we took him to a doctor, and the doctor said he was going to need surgery and at least eight weeks of casts and several things. And I said, no, no, absolutely not. In, in, in the name of Jesus, no. That's not going to happen to him. And we came to church, and we all prayed, and we were in agreement. And I knew before my eyes were open that he was healed. We were in agreement over the heart condition as well. And um, the, we went back to the doctor the next day, and he did not need surgery. And the temporary cast was all I needed for a week. We went to his new cardiologist in Springfield, and he checked his heart, and he said, I believe your son, his heart is in awesome shape. He does not have SVT. Are you healed? I'm healed. He's healed. Glory to God. And how old are you? Six. Six years old, and he's all healed. I remember when we prayed for him right down here, standing at the front. He came down here. One of the first times you came to the church, right? Yes, yes ma'am. All right. We love you, Paul. All right. This is Darlene and Alexander. They're going to tell us their testimony about what happened, and he's going to get excited about it tonight. All right. Glory, Glory to God. God. Bless the Lord. Alexander, when uh, he was two and a half, we found a tumor on the back of his leg the size of a grape, and the pediatrician just told us to kind of watch it. Well, by the time he was eight, it was the size of a tennis ball, and they said uh, to operate on it would damage his knee permanently. And that was about the time we moved here and learned the word of God and stood and we went home and we prayed. And I asked him, I said, do you believe you received? And he said, yeah. And I said, then we're not going to talk about it again. We're just going to leave it alone. By Jesus stripes, you're healed. Well, a week later, I had some oil on my hands and a routine. I used to kind of rub it on the back of his leg to kind of get rid of the pain. And I called him in and, and I said, Alexander, do you mind if I rub a little oil on the back of your leg? And he said, sure. He looked at me kind of funny. I, I, I leaned down and I rubbed his leg and there wasn't anything there. And I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> I have the wrong leg. So I said, I'm sorry, Alexander. And I, I leaned over and I rubbed the other leg. And I started screaming, you're healed. Glory to God. There was no lump gone. And we started running around the house yelling and screaming. And, and we were so excited. We were at home. Bless tell, the Lord. Tell us what you did. Yelled. I was excited. You got excited? <laughs> did you Jumped up and down. Did you shout and jump and run? Yeah. And did you tell Mama you were believing God? Yes. What did you pray? You told us one time what you prayed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you told me you were going to talk. All right. Well, Amen. glory Many to God. Words. We know Hallelujah. he's healed. Yes, yes, glory to God. He did shout and scream and yell. So let's stand up and thank God once again for all these miracle testimonies and all the things that's happened in these people's lives. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I'm telling you, healing's here tonight. Oh, the healer's in the house tonight. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Right? You know, sometimes people think, oh, you know, it, it is a little small headache. So, yeah, let's pray and believe God real quick. Oh, no, it's a terminal disease. Oh, we're going to have to have a m- 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 miracle. <laughs> hey, you couldn't do either one. So you might as well relax and realize that God does miracles. And what seems like the big things, the hard things, the too far gone things, it's not hard for him. It's easy. And so all it requires is a faith on our part. Oh, let your faith rise. Now listen, God has already healed people. Already healed people tonight. But get ready for another wave of healing to come. How, you ready to sing for us, Miss Ann? Come right on up here. Miss Annie Durant, she's going to sing and the anointing is going to come. Receive your healing now as they sing. And for you, he wants to make a way. Just ask and believe by faith, receive. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer in the house today. And for you, he wants to make a way. Just ask and believe by faith, receive. There's a healer in the house today. Now the word says the holy healer was passing by one day. 
was a man who was afflicted, but he had the faith to say, if I could ever get to Jesus, I know my healing would be complete. If I can't get through the door, I'll tear off the roof. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer in the house today. And for you, he wants to make a way. Just ask and believe by faith. Receive. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer in the house today. And for you, he wants to make a way. Just ask and believe by faith. Receive. There's a healer in the house today. Now, if you're sick or diseased in your body, I've got good news to bring. You see, the healer, his name is Jesus. He's the King of all kings. He rides on the winds of mercy, and there's healing in his wings. So take the roof off your doubt. Let your faith come on out. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer in the house today. And for you, he wants to make a way. Just ask and believe by faith. Receive. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer in the house today. And for you, he wants to make a way. Just ask and believe by faith. Receive. There's a healer in the house today. There's a healer in this house. Do you believe it tonight? There's a healer. tonight. Praise God. And no matter what you're facing, no matter what the situation is, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Glory to God. And he's here. He's here. And he's faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten. That you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. And right now it seems there's no way out. You're going under. But God's proven time and time again. He'll take care of you. Do it again, friend. Oh, he'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through for you? Well, he's the same now as then. God knows the things that you're going through and how you're hurting. And he understands just how your heart's been broken into. But listen, he's the God of the sun, the stars, the sea, and he your father he'll calm the storm he'll find a way to fix it for you and he'll do it again oh he'll do it again just take a look at where you are now and where 
the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you'll do it again. He's still good. Yes, he's still good. He will not fail you. Would y'all please come while the anointing is strong? I don't want us to break. These folks need no introduction. Such powerful healing ministry that they flow in. The regular broadcast and the anointing is on them. All over the world they've seen miracles and healings. And tonight the anointing is on them. Hallelujah. To reach out. Hallelujah. Keith, well, I got the first testimony. Uh, there was a woman who came down earlier. She is. She turned out to be Dino and Cheryl's doctor. Yeah. She's here in the crowd tonight. She heard me give that word of knowledge about shoulders. She came down and she said, my shoulder is completely healed tonight. Uh, right now. Right now. Right now is the time for healing. It's happening. We don't have to wait. It's happening. Guys, minister to us as the Lord Praise shows. the Lord. Be seated, if you will, please. Lindsay, it's God's hour for people to get well. They can get well right where they are. Healing, healing is in our midst. My father, Oral Roberts, how many of you have heard of Oral Roberts? Let me, a few of you. I give you his love and greetings tonight. He gave us a word of prophecy. He said, healing is coming big time. Now, that was nine years ago he gave that word. Well, I've got news. Healing has come big time. Can you say amen tonight? Now, I want to establish a pattern here because something happened when, when Dodie Osteen came up to, to, to speak. Sister Dodie and, and Brother John Osteen go way back to our family uh, when, when I was a child. And one of the things that I just got such a tickle out of. Sweet. He does this to me all the time. One of the things I that was I was trying got to help you, girl. So cute, <laughs> when I was 18, I was diagnosed with just about every kind of thing you don't want to be diagnosed with. My father died when I was 12. He died of cancer. My mother had had surgeries and every kind of tumor and junk that followed. And by the time I was 18, it looked like that pattern was to be established in our family. And when I came into uh, Richard's family, and, and Richard and I were married, into that... I had been told I'd never have children and several other diagnoses that went along with that. And right after we were married, I had discovered that I had a tumor the size of a large orange or a small grapefruit. 
And I was told that there was a cancer specialist and this and that and this and that. And the day they discovered it, I was to be in surgery the next day. And yet Kenneth Copeland had prophesied and said, you two will have children sooner than you think. And instead of having sooner than Remember I that? think, within the next day I was to be in surgery for a hysterectomy. And I was in my early, tw early 20s, about 24 years old. And my brother walked into my hospital room and he handed me a, a, a book called The ABCs of Faith by Brother John Osteen. And he began to preach to me in this book. And one of the scriptures was, Speak to your mountain. And no sooner that I had read that than the doctor came in and said, You know, we're just going to have to do a hysterectomy because it's like a mountain and it's eating up all the other molehills. And I said, Say it to me slowly. And he said, well, it's like a mountain. I said, hallelujah. And the doctor, of course, thought I was nuts. And I said, no, 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 because my Bible says you can speak to your mountain and it would obey you. You command it to be cast into the sea and do not doubt in your heart. But believe those things that you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. The next morning I was in surgery in front of cancer specialists and every kind of surgeon as they opened me up. Oh, Lindsay, they had, the they had seen it on the B-scan even ultrasound, moments. Everything. An ultrasound moments before they took her into surgery. I decided that John Osteen said it was true in the Word of God. And if John said it was true, it was true. And by the time they had me all sewn back together, it had disappeared and I was miraculously healed. Thank God for your family. Years later, I had been diagnosed with a bunch of other messes, and by now, Dodie had written that book, Healed of Cancer, with her 40 healing scriptures. My children were all about this high by now, and every one of them got their own copy. And every day of the world, every day, every day of the world, as a family, we sat down and to this day read 40 healing scriptures from Dodie Osteen. And I cannot thank you enough that your testimony has been a witness to many of us praising God not only for your healing, Hallelujah. but for our healings as a result of your testimony. Praise the Lord. Give glory unto the Lord Amen. tonight. Amen. My friends, there's nothing too hard for God. Cancer, out of her body. Dino's back <laughs> as you came on the grounds. God healed you. Your, your medical doctor, Cheryl, and others watching tonight, there is no distance in prayer. Well, I believe that your faith is part of it. Dodie's faith was a part of it. She gave that in her testimony tonight. Sure. And she used the scripture, the word of God. Well, how does faith come? It comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. And hearing by the by word the of word God. God. You've been hearing the word of God tonight. Well, what does the word of God do? It's like a drill. It drills down into your heart. In Oklahoma, where I live, there's oil underneath the ground. It's been there for hundreds and thousands of years waiting for someone to drill down and put pressure on it and cause that oil or natural gas to come up out of the ground. Well, that's like the Word of God. The Word of God is the drill. It drills into your heart and causes your faith to rise up. And that's what's been happening tonight. Have you noticed how this evening has been orchestrated? Have you noticed how everything has been pushing toward a crescendo of getting you well? Yes. And how Pastor has been so sensitive, and Pastor Phyllis, they've been so sensitive tonight uh, to obey the Holy Spirit, and little interruptions have happened. You see, we call them interruptions, but they're Holy Ghost interventions. That's what's happening to push toward a crescendo. Now, when you hear that word, it gets down in your heart. And then what does the Bible say? Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So that word begins to come up, and suddenly you begin to say, I believe that I can have the power of God in my life. And that's what this night is about. I want you to stand up right now. And I want you to join hands with someone. The Bible says, pray one for another that you may be healed. Now, I used to think it said, pray one for another that, I, they, that, that they might get healed. Well, you're certainly praying for their healing. But it says, pray one for another that you may be healed. It's a seed prayer that you pray into someone else believing for their healing, and then expect God to multiply that back to you and bring healing into your own life. Let's take just a moment tonight and begin to pray right now for the person on our right and on our left. Lindsay, you just pray representing the people on the right. I'll pray on the left. And you begin to pray right there where you are. You at home, join hands with somebody there you're with in your room or wherever you are and begin to pray for them. Lindsay? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the person on my right. And as we corporately lift up the person on our right, we thank you, Father God, for ministering healing to them right now. Now, your word said, Father God, God, that by the stripes that wounded Jesus were healed and made completely whole. Lord God, we take that word. You promised that you would watch over your word to perform it. So we take you at your word. Yes. 
And right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we apply the stripes that wounded Jesus to the person on our right. We apply the stripes that wounded Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. And we thank you, Father God. <clears throat> that right now in the name of Jesus, healing is begin to manifest right now. Now, Father God, I'm asking for spiritual healing. Father God, I'm asking for physical healing. God, I am asking for financial healing. And I'm asking, Father God, for family healing in every area of their life in Jesus' name. Now, for the person on your left, pray for them. In Jesus' name, I set my faith in an agreement with every one of you touching someone on your left and you that are watching right now by television. We send the word into their body into their mind, into their spirit, into their family, into their finances, into their marriage, their business, their job, their ministry, in every area of their life, through Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we release our faith for a miracle. Now everyone here, lift your hands and begin to give praise and honor and glory to God. Now say right, say this out loud, in Jesus' name, Jesus name. As, we pray, as we pray, and as God manifests the gifts of the Spirit, I receive my healing touch. Now, the Lord has instructed me to begin in heart conditions. There are many of you that are watching tonight, and some are here tonight, who have heart conditions. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I speak to the arterial sclerosis. In Jesus' name, come out, and there are arteries opening all across America and around the world right now. I, I see it in the Spirit. I see it. I see it. There are arteries that are opening all the plaque. In someone's arteries coming out right now, it's, being, it's like a Holy Ghost rotor rooter going into your arteries right now in Jesus' name. I speak to the heart muscle and to every vessel in and out of the heart in Jesus' name. Function like you are designed by God, the master designer. Heart beat normally. I rebuke the skipping of the beat, the irregular beat, and the quick beat. We've already heard the testimony tonight of how uh, the little boy was healed of the heart condition, and there's no, God is no respecter of persons. So in Jesus' name, Lindsay, I take authority over this heart condition, and I commend it to be made whole in Jesus' name. And if that's you, call TBN right now and give your testimony. And I believe that as you give your testimony, the Bible says they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Begin to speak that forth. Now, when I told you the testimony of what happened to me, I want to speak directly right now to generational curses. What happened in my family, my mother, then me, my sister, my niece, my 15-year-old daughter, who's now 16, Chloe, was diagnosed with some garbage just as well. And when they began to diagnose tumors and cysts on your little daughter, suddenly something starts to happen to you as a mother. And we got out the Word of God. We got out our 40 scriptures, and we began to go through the Word of God. And I said, now listen, the Bible says, and I said, and not only does the Bible say, but you couldn't be here without a miracle. So let's expect a miracle. You know what she said to me? She said, I want you to take me somewhere. I said, baby, anywhere you want to go, Mama will take you. She said, I want to go to Pastor Keith and Phyllis's church. And I said, you got a deal. And we drove to Branson. You all laid hands on her. You prayed for her. Now, we had already had this on MRIs and ultrasounds and all that stuff. And we had seen it and we had gotten the bad report. And they wanted to do surgery on my 15-year-old. And so we began to pray, and then we went to a, a, a Rodney Howard Brown meeting. And after all you guys had prayed and laid hands on my baby, we went back for those same ultrasounds and MRIs, and that baby is the healed of the Lord. So Today, now I want to speak directly to generational junk. Maybe you have had some kind of, of, of diagnosis that this is in your family history and it's always been there and now you have the fear of it happening to you. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's tumors. Maybe it's something in your mind. Maybe it's something in your body. Maybe you just feel like it's a generational failure that Papa failed and Mama failed and you're going to be a failure and they pronounce it. No! In the name of Jesus, you I are of God, little children. You are of God, little children. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare that you are of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from yes. the dead lives in you to quicken your mortal body. Hallelujah. That means make it alive. So I say come alive. <coughs> Excuse me. And my Bible says that you should live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. So in the name of Jesus, stop speaking death into your situation. Start speaking life into your situation. Life to your family. Life to your body. Life to your children. And you tell those generational curses to be bound and broken in the name of Jesus. That you are of the lineage of God. You are of the lineage of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he didn't have that in his family history. Right. And you don't have to either. In Jesus' name. Lindsay. Amen. There are people watching tonight, 
deafness is leaving ears right now in Jesus' name. There are cataracts being healed. There is glaucoma being healed. There is carpal tunnel syndrome being healed right now in Jesus' name. There are ulcers that are being healed. There is colitis. God's healing someone watching right now with ulcerated colitis. God's healing you right now in the authority of Jesus' name. There are other backs that are being healed. There are discs and vertebra being healed right now. Now, everyone, stretch your hands out toward me. Stretch your hands out toward me. Just reach out. You that are watching by television, put your hands up against my hands. Now, that may seem very strange to you. The Lord's been having me do this a lot lately on television. Put your hands against my hands and let my hands become a point of contact. Not that my hands have any healing power, because I know they don't and you know they don't. But my hands are hooked up to the one who does. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I speak to your entire circulatory system. I speak to your entire skeletal system, your bone system. I speak to every organ, every vessel, every, every inch of tissue in your body. And I send the healing word of Jesus into you tonight, right now. Satan, you take your hands off God's property. And Father, we lift up the name which is above every name named in heaven and earth. And that is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose we are and who we belong to. And we say, Satan, that's enough. You take your hands off, and we call forth healing tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Give praise unto the Lord tonight. Lindsay. And the scripture says God has not given to you the spirit of fear. Right. I think one of Satan's biggest tools is fear. If he can torment you with fear, then you are afraid to walk out and do what God's called you to do. Maybe it's fear of failure, fear of your finances, fear of your physical body. You know, fear this whatever. person had cancer, so, so you hear that word and suddenly your brain goes in. And you know, sometimes you turn on the news and I tell you, you can be bound with the spirit of fear. Now, we need information, but we don't need fear of that information. So right now, if you are bound with fear, in the name of Jesus, I break that off of you according to the word and the will of God. And I declare the word says you have not been given the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank Amen. you, Father. Lift your hands unto him tonight. I pray over each one of you tonight. I pray the blessing of Abraham on you. Thank you. I pray the mind of Christ. I pray the spirit Thank of you, David. Jesus. I pray the wisdom of Solomon Thank over you, you tonight. I pray the, pleasure, you, the precious Jesus. shed blood of Jesus and the joy of the Lord, which Hallelujah. is your strength and God's peace that passes all understanding and for healing to come to you, you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Lift your hands and rejoice Thank and give you, praise and give honor and give Thank glory you, unto the Lord tonight in Jesus' Thank mighty name. God. Come on, give praise a shout you, of praise tonight because the victory Victory is ours by faith in Jesus. Name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. God. Thank you. All. Thank you. All. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's just keep praising for a minute. Healing is flowing. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Can you see waves of healing? Here's another wave. Hallelujah. There's been wave after wave. And can you hear all these witnesses of healing? The ones that have been ministering have also told you how the Lord has healed them. The Lord has healed me. We know from whence we speak. Right? We have more witnesses. How many understand an eyewitness? They were there. They saw it. They heard it. Irrefutable. Be seated. Let's hear some more in Jesus' name. Well, this is Miss Mary Clapp, and she was here in a service with us one night when Keith talked about tumors and stuff being removed, and so I'm going to let her share with you about what happened to her. Go ahead, Miss Mary. It was about two months ago. And is her mic on? No, it should be on. It's Brother Moore's mic. Sorry. It was about two months ago, and we were sitting in the fifth row, and he had called out tumors and growths, and we were to stand and pray for people with tumors and growths. And I was just thinking I was standing in agreement with everybody. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reminded me that I had a lump on the back of my neck, um, I had it for about 12 years, 
and it wasn't um, anything of a concern. But I did go to the doctor 12 years ago, and he did tell me that it wasn't anything of concern. It didn't get any smaller, didn't get any bigger. And um, anyhow, I laid my hand on it. My husband was sitting next to me, and we just agreed that it would go away. And it was there. I felt it. And then I felt again, and it was gone. <laughs> so anyhow, I guess the point of it is it wasn't anything serious. It was something small but not small to God, not insignificant to God. He was very concerned, and he healed me. <laughs> so I guess it grew my faith and my trust in him, and he let me know nothing is too small for God. That's right. And that night, the um, anointing was so strong with God's presence and just the corporate prayer of the people that I believe that's what me. And he cares about what you he cared about. about. Yep. yep. Glory to God. So it, instantaneous, it just went away. This lump was gone on her neck. So glory to God. And the next one we have here is Miss Rochelle Wallen. Now she came to us and she had been having, I'm going to let her tell you, but she had been having blood transfusions for a very long time. And I'm going to let her tell you the story about what happened. Yeah, I'm one of those women with an issue of blood. And, uh, I had gone for six years uh, having one blood transfusion after another. And uh, finally, uh, they decided that I needed to go to a bigger hospital, so I went to Little Rock. And they had just come up with a, a capsule with a camera in it. And if I swallowed it, perhaps they could find the answer. And so I swallowed the capsule. Uh, the diagnosis was that uh, the small intestines were bleeding throughout. And normally, uh, they, there's a, an abrasion here or there, but mine was throughout. And they told me that it would take many laser surgeries to, uh, to make it okay. And so I came to a church on Sunday, and I was to go to the doctor, to the hospital on Monday. And uh, I came, and Brother Keith was teaching, and all the time I was sitting in my seat, all I could hear was, if I could but touch the hem of his garment. And I knew the Lord was saying to me, if I could touch the hem of Jesus' garment in Brother Keith, I would be healed. So anyway, I didn't know quite how to bring this about, so I just followed protocol. And at the end of the service, when they said that whoever needed prayer could come down to the altar, I came down and uh, the prayer group prayed for me, for which I was grateful. But that really was not what God had said. <laughs> and so, um, but I turned to leave and uh, Phyllis was standing over to my left and uh, the lady she had been speaking with had just walked away. And uh, so I went up to her, and I introduced myself and told her my story. And uh, she said, just a minute, let me go get Keith. <laughs> and to make a long story short, uh, we wound up backstage, and she and Brother Keith laid hands on me. And I knew... When they laid hands on me, I had touched the hem of his garment. <laughs> and I knew I, was, I knew I was healed. So praise God, um, I went ahead and went back and uh, let the doctors do whatever it is that they wanted to do. And I had one laser surgery. And uh, they told me that I would be having many. And I've... Uh, I've not had another blood transfusion, and I've not had another laser surgery. Praise God. Give him glory all the glory. Glory to God. God is the faithful one, and he is the healer. Glory to God. It just was the channel that he used, but Jesus is the healer, right? Glory to God. All right. Yes, glory to God. And now the next one we have is Louis Bench, and he had a, a real thing happen with his head and then his back. So he's going to be able to tell them both really quickly here. Well, I had a... I, I worked at a manufacturing place, and I had a 60-pound stainless steel thing fall somewhere from about 10 feet and hit me in the head and split open my head here and then bounced off. And uh, I immediately, the guy asked me, does that hit you in the head? And I said, I don't know. 
and he lifted up my collar and I felt blood rushing down the back of my neck and immediately I grabbed my head and, and I, I called out on, in the name of Jesus. And by the time we got up to the nurse's station, uh, the blood had stopped flowing and I could, my fingers weren't in my head anymore and I was completely healed and they just sewed me up a little bit. I, w- I wish I could say it stopped there, but it didn't. I listened to people. And people said, well, why don't you sue those people? Why don't you know, you need to do this. And, and I, those thoughts kept going through my mind and stuff. And then I was hurt again at work, and I destroyed uh, several vertebra and different things in my back. And I got so bad to where I could just barely take care of myself. And a girl I met told me, said, why don't you go to church and ask uh, someone to uh, pray with you? And I was like, I was like, well, I don't know. And I, and I toyed with it for several months, and I finally, I said, well, you know, uh, Keith Moore has a church down there in Branson. And I was like, I'm going to go down there. And so I went on a Friday night. He was ministering healing. And when I came in service, God told me, he said, he said, if you will forgive the people that have stolen money from you and done everything wrong to you, I will heal you. And faith works by love. And that is the only way when we walk in love, we can receive anything from God. And so I said, God, okay, right now, I I forgive. And I named every single person off. And uh, he said, now, he goes, now that you've forgiven those people, I've forgiven you. He goes, go down front. Brother Moore is going to call for people to be laid hands on. And he goes, when he lays hands on you, he goes, I'm going to heal you. And Brother Moore laid hands on me. And I agreed. And I went out. And I laid there on the ground and the power of God came on me and it's like someone took coals of fire off off a off a grill and laid right in my back and bones and things started moving and and the best scripture I can think of it says and you hath he quickened who were dead and trespasses and sins and and I just I got up from there and I was pain free I was drug free all the medications they had on me I, that I was taken, and glory to God, God healed me right then and right. Glory to God. Forgiveness, forgiveness, glory to God. And this is Brother Kerry Hurst. He was our, our he was a male man. Now he's a, a healed man. Yeah. So go ahead and tell us your testimony. Well, in June of 2003, I was delivering uh, mail on a rural mail route, and uh, someone come around a, a curve at a high rate of speed and hit the small pickup I was in head on. I wasn't wearing a seat belt, and because I was sitting on the passenger side of the pickup, the force of the impact broke several of my ribs and, and broke my left leg right below the knee, just shattered the bones. I wound up in surgery at a local hospital, and the doctor had to place metal bars and pins on the upper part and lower part of my leg and the pins going into my bones. And After four surgeries, his prognosis wasn't very good. He said, told my wife and myself that I probably would never be able to walk normal again and probably wouldn't be able to bend my knee. Shortly after that, my wife began to lay her hands on my head and declare that I would walk, that I would run, that I would leap. We went back to surgery again after about five weeks, and the Lord uh, had already begun to quicken my body, but they removed the bars and the pins, and they put a small plate on the side of my leg to hold it, to, to stabilize it where I could begin to move it. So I began to exercise my leg and move it, and within a short period of time, I was bending my leg. We went back for new x-rays. And the x-rays, as we looked at it, we couldn't see the fractures. And uh, we could see that it was solid white. And the doctor said, well, that's new bone growth. And he said, that's impossible. He said, there's not been enough time for this kind of new bone growth to take place. So over a period of weeks, I I began to uh, improve. And the doctor was so amazed that he just kept saying, I I don't understand it. He said, there's not been uh, enough time for this kind of healing. And he told us, he said, I'll be frank with you. I never expected you to be able to walk normal. And he said, I really didn't think you'd be able to bend your leg. But since that time, my leg has got stronger and stronger. I can bend my knee. I can walk. And I just give all the praise and glory to God. Yes, glory to God. Jump for us one time. Yeah, yeah, there he goes. Look at him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, this is Mr. Don Smith, and he's got a really good testimony you're going to enjoy, too. So. In February of last year, no, it was, yes, it was February of last year, I got sick and went to Skaggs Hospital. They found that my heart rhythm was out, and they had to stop my heart and restart the the heart out. They done that, and then they found cancer in the liver. 
I left there and went home to Arkansas and I took healing tapes of Brother Morris, books of Brother Higgins, the Bible, and I stood on Mark 11, 23, and 24. I went to my doctor in Arkansas. He took tests and he said, it is cancer. There's three masks. I went home. My sister called me and she said, I need details so my church can pray for you. I said, the details is I'm standing on the Word of God. I'm healed. That's it. That's she all said, the details. She said, no, we need details. You don't understand. I said, well, I understand that I'm standing on Mark 11, 23, 23 and, and 24, 24, and I am healed. healed. That's it. That's all the, the details. The following Sunday, I came back to Faith Life Church. Phyllis Moore was having a healing meeting here. I stood up in the line. When she laid hands on me, I knew that I was healed. <laughs> She asked for a testimony. I got up here and said, my cancer is gone from my liver. So I went back home, called my doctor and said, we got to have some more tests. <laughs> we went and got the test. They called me and said, you got to come in. He's going to tell you your options. I went in. He took the test and he sat down there and he said, I've got the wrong report here. <laughs> and he got up and left. About 20 minutes, he came back, and he said, there's no cancer. I said, praise God. He said, well, God made your body. He can heal your body. But in three months, we need to look at that again. <laughs> we looked at it again in three months, and I'm cancer-free. Praise glory the Lord. Glory to God. Yes, glory to God. Let's stand up once again and thank Him for all these miracles that He's been doing. Glory to God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's on the platform. He's God. The door. He's God in the amen corner. He's God all over the floor. I know God is God, and God don't never change. I know God.
if you believe it. He comes. Oh, hallelujah. God is God. And always will be. He used to heal. He still does. He does and He always will. He's God. He don't ever change. Well, if you're not convinced yet, I don't know. But have a seat and we'll finish up. Hallelujah. If there's anybody else that's still wondering, Jesus is the healer. Wave after wave of healing in this service tonight and all over by the wonderful TBN ministry the healing waves are going out reaching out into bedrooms and living rooms and places all over it's time if you had not already received to receive the Lord stirred in my spirit real strong the scripture in Psalms where the psalmist said I've been young and now I'm old but there's something I had never seen or here in Arkansas is it something I, something I ain't never seen what he said I have never seen the righteous Forsaken. Just stop right there. Stop right there. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Do you remember the Lord said, I am with you always, even unto the end. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Never, never, never. You can leave him. He won't leave you. You come back to him. He's right there. Oh, a lot of people can come back tonight. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Somebody said, well, yeah, if I was righteous, maybe so. It's real simple. If you have faith in Jesus, you have been made the righteousness of God in Jesus. It's not about your works. It's not about how good you can be. The blood of the Lamb has made you worthy, has made you and I right in the eyes of God. Do you have faith in Jesus? Do you have faith in the blood? Then say it out loud. I am righteous. I am, righteous. I am, the, righteous I am the righteous of the Lord, of the Lord. Made, clean made clean by the blood. By the blood. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So don't you believe the devil's lies that, you know, the Lord has forsaken you, that he has let you down in your sickness and in your problem, in your difficulty, where's the Lord? He's right there. He's right there. But get the next part. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor what? Nor his seed begging bread. The Lord said something to me some years ago. I wrote it down, and he brought it to me uh, today real strong. He said, believers are not beggars. And beggars are not believers. If you're begging, you're not believing. If you're believing, you're not begging. And he brought to my remembrance this passage of Scripture. Turn with me, please. Luke chapter 18. Can you take some more tonight? Oh, it's been so rich already. Glory to God. Luke chapter 18. You know the story, but I want to read it to you. And I want us to see a great truth here. Luke 18 and 35. It said, It came to pass as Jesus was come near to Jericho. A certain blind man sat by the wayside doing what? Begging. What was he doing? 
He's blind and he's begging. How long has he been begging? I mean, there's implications that it's been this way. And as he's blind, he's begging and he's still blind and he's begging and he's blind and begging and it's a cycle. Is he believing? If he was believing, would he be begging? Now, are you with me on this? Oh, this is so important. I looked up this word beg to remind myself of it. To beg means to ask for a handout. It means to press, to nag, and to worry, one translation said. So by the, by, by the roadside there, he's, he's pressing and he's pleading because he's blind. He can't work. There, there's not some of the uh, organizations to help then like there are now. So he's pleading with everybody that comes by, can you help me? Alms for the poor. Can you help the blind? Can you help me with something to eat? Can you help me? And this is all the man probably knew that he could do. He, he had no idea how he could make a livelihood otherwise. But oh, what a low place for a human soul to have to come down to. Are you with me now? You're going to help me with this tonight. What a low place. How that <clears throat> he's having to plead with people, would you give me something? A handout, please. I'm hungry. Blind. Could you spare some change? Please. Please. Did you know that the same thing has happened in the church? Did you know that centuries of religious tradition being taught has turned millions of Christians into beggars? The only way they know how to pray is Please, oh please God, please, I know we don't deserve it, I know we're unworthy, but could you give us a handout, could you spare something for us, could you spare something, he's begging, he's pleading, listen to something else, definition of, uh, of beg, beg, it means one who crouches and cowers. One who crouches and cowers. And I've seen people in these states and, and somebody comes by and they, and they fall down and they go, Oh, please, could you help? Please, could you help? Please. Another definition of beg. Now get this one. To ask repeatedly. To ask over and over again. Please, could you help me? Please, could you help me? Please, could you help me? Sounds like some prayer meetings I've been in. How about you? Please, could you help me? Please, could you help me? But for all this time that he's begged, we don't see it get him any closer to his sight. Why are you saying that, Brother Keith? Tonight? Listen, there are people all over this world. There are people in hospital rooms tonight. There are people in their own homes, in their own bedrooms. They're saved. They know God. They love God. But all they know to do is beg. And they've been begging the Lord, please heal me, please heal me. I don't want to die. Please heal me, please heal me. They say I can't live. But please, please, please. And they grovel and they fawn and they crouch. Please, please. Please, Jesus never told you to do that. Amen. The Lord never told us to come a begging, crouching. What did he say? He said, come boldly. Oh, come on. Somebody's, somebody's got to help me. So, come boldly before the throne of grace to get your mercy and get your grace to help. In your time. He didn't say, come begging. Come groveling. The difference, like Brother Richard was saying a minute ago, is faith. Faith is the difference. You've heard it over and over again tonight, but I'm here to tell you tonight, brother and sister, faith is not a beggar. 
Faith is not a croucher and a whiner and a crier and a pleader and ask over and over and over and over. Please, 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 please. You got to quit it. You got to stand up. You got to be the righteous of God. You got to be the bold of the Lord. You got to be a believer. A believer. Beggars are not believers. And believers don't beg. People, harsh, cruel tyrants that want people to come and fawn to them and, 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 and kiss their feet and, 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 and please, please and beg. They are people who are insecure, who don't know who they are, who are twisted, who are perverted. Our God is not such a God. He is not such a God. He's a God of love. Hallelujah. He's a God who reached down and saved us and stood us up so we could stand in the very presence of the Almighty, clean and pure, seated together with Jesus in heavenly places. He didn't intend for you and I to beg or to plead. That's why Jesus came and He hung on the cross and He was whipped at the post and He bought and He paid for your healing. You don't have to beg anybody for it. He bought it. He paid for it. Oh, are you with me tonight? He said, He heard the multitude pass by. In verse 36, he is a professional beggar. That's who he is. That's what he is. And when they passed by, they told him that Jesus of Nazareth, rather, was passing by. And he cried and he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Now, what is that? Well, this is the natural thing for him to do. He does this all day long. Only now, it's not for money. It's something else. But, but he's still begging. Jesus, have mercy on me. I think some people have misunderstood this. And they've, they've stopped at this verse and, and tried to get people to cry and beg. Don't stop at this verse. Go on down and see what Jesus did. A great change came in this man's life in just a few moments. You got to listen with your heart tonight now. Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, he's still begging. But that's all he knows. He wasn't able to come and hear teaching like we do and, and have all the materials and have all the, the things that have fed us for years. Wasn't even available yet. That's all he knows. But Jesus heard his heart. And they that went before him, they rebuked him and said, you know, shut up. But he cried so much the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Walk in all the light you got. Right? All he knew was begging. But he's doing it at full volume. Right? And he's doing all he knows to do. And then, Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he was come near, he asked him, he said, What will you that I shall do to you? Now, let's just stop right here. Here's where revelation comes. If begging would have gotten it done, this would be the end of the story right here. He's begged. He's got Jesus' attention. And Jesus has stopped and said, bring him here. If begging would do it, Jesus would say, I, I hear you. You're begging me. Here, I'm going to heal you. But he didn't. I said he didn't. The Lord is not moved to action by needs. He's not moved to action by pleading and begging. If God was moved by needs, if he was moved by begging, miracles would be popping all over the planet right now. No. What causes God, like Brother Smith Wigglesworth said one time, to pass over a million people just to get to you? What causes that? What causes that? Faith. Faith. Well, believers are not beggars. Or oh, are you ready for this? Are you ready to see this man transformed? Now, we don't have this in Luke's account, but the Bible said he called him, and when he did, he got up and threw his garment off. 
Now, you know, if you've heard about that and read about that, that that garment probably indicated his status as a beggar. Something is transforming in this man's life and his mind and his heart. He's not just throwing off this cloak. He's throwing off an identity. No more a beggar. But now what's happening? He is becoming a believer. And Jesus looked at him and said, what do you want? Well, you know, you, th- you might think it'd be obvious what he wanted. But see, this is about faith. If begging would get it, he'd be healed right now. But no, what do you want? He said, I want to receive my sight. What did Jesus say? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Verse, what? Verse 41, he said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. Jesus, verse 42, said what? Receive. Oh, what did he say? Receive. Receive. Your sight. Receive your sight. Then what happened next? Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. And immediately, what did he do? He received his sight and followed him glorifying God. And all the people when they saw it, they gave praise to God. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you see something happened in this man and he stopped begging and started believing. And as a believer, he used his faith to receive. I'm believing God right now. That people in this place and people all over this place and all over the world that have been begging, begging, please heal me, please Jesus heal me, please heal me. And praying with other people that are begging and pleading. I know you meant well, but it's not right. I know you meant well, but you got to stop that. No, Jesus is not impressed with you laying around groveling and trying to show him that you're humble. He's not impressed with that. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet, on the inside of you. Stand up and realize that who you are in Jesus. Stand up and realize that He wanted you to stand up and be with Him. Oh, do you remember Jesus is walking on the water? And you remember, you know, that they they cried out and, and were afraid. And Peter said, if that's you, bid me to come. And a lot of theologians would have said, how dare you? What do you mean, uh, assume, presume, you could do what the Son of Man, the Son of God does? But what did Jesus say? Oh, come on, what did Jesus say? He said, he said, come on. Oh, that's God's heart from the beginning, to restore His man to full place and full fellowship so that we might rule and reign in this life. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The scripture says, He raises up the poor out of the dust and He lifts up the beggar from the dunghill and sets him among princes and makes him to inherit the throne of glory. Say it out loud, no more begging. No more begging for me. I'm a believer. I'm not a beggar. My father did not ask me to crouch, grovel, whine, beg. He made me righteous. He made me strong. He told me to come boldly. And here I come. Hallelujah. Stand up on your feet. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We're ready right now to release our faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. If you've got it set in your heart and you know that you know that you know that you are ready to receive healing right now, would you raise your hand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yep. All right, everybody else be seated. If you're uh, the ones who raised your hands, you you stay standing. Everybody else be seated. If you know that you're healed and you're fine, go ahead and be seated. But if you're ready to receive a healing right now, if you're watching by uh, TV and Internet, you get ready right now, you you stand 
stand up. We're not just standing in the natural. We're standing up in spirit. No more begging. Hold that head up high. He's the glory and the lifter of our head. We're through begging. We're believers. No more begging. We come to receive. We come to get our healing. We come to lay hold of it with our faith. Now you heard the man talking about Mark 11, 23 and 24. Huh? They want the details? He said, here they are. Mark 11, 23 and 24. You know what it says? What things soever you desire when you pray, do what? Believe that you receive them and you'll have them. That word receive literally means take. Believe that you take them and you shall have them. If you want hands laid on you tonight, I want you to go ahead and get ready. Uh, everybody that's standing, make your way. Let's see, this, this part of the auditorium to this side, is that right? And this part of the auditorium to this side, am I telling you right? Go ahead, make your way right now. If you want hands laid on you tonight to receive your healing, glory be to God. We're going to pray for you. Watching by the great TBN network, God's going to touch you just like you were right here. If you hadn't already received your healing, right here and right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like Phyllis and... Um, Miss Osteen and, and Brother Richard, Miss Lindsay and, and Dino and Cheryl, would y'all come? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's come up to the platform if y'all would. And I want us to pray for the people right now. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Guys, let's reach our hands out as we begin ministering here. Let's reach our hands out toward everybody that's believing across this great TBN network. Many have already received their healing. But right now, God has stirred you and you are through begging and you are through despairing and you're ready to receive... In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Now out loud of your mouth, say, I'll receive my healing. I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I take it. I take my healing from the top of my head. To the soles of my feet, everything in between, I believe that I receive my healing now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I ask you now, as we lay hands on these, that you'd let your anointing come very strong and minister further to everyone here. And guys, when we come and lay hands on you, you don't, don't be trying to tell us things. Don't be trying to do anything. Don't be trying to say a lot of things. Just be primed that when hands are laid on you, you say, I receive it. Yes. That's it. I receive my healing. That's what you do. You believe you receive. Don't think about falling, not falling. Just, I receive it. Right then. I've asked these fine ministers to come assist us as we pray for the sick. Would y'all come, please? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, let your healing anointing 
come strong. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, receive, 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 receive. There it is right there, right there, right there in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. In the Dapala Blamas, don't divide a vein, that's it, right there. Right there, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive in the name of Jesus. Oh, receive in the name of Jesus. That's it, right there. Right there, be healed, be healed. Receive in the heart of a not stone of a not stone of a Receive in the name of Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Oh, be healed and made whole and free. In the name of Jesus. Be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Heal. 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 Oh, in the name of Jesus, be healed from the top of your head. I'm feeling clean, so I'm in the vault of all the way. I'm in the rain, but there's that to go. In the name of Jesus. Makes me whole again. Oh, be healed, be healed, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my healer. 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 Oh,
of Jesus. That's it. Leave you receive. In the name of Jesus. Oh, that kind of kind of promise goes away. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Makes me whole again. Oh, Jesus is Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. the name Jesus of Jesus. Be healed and be made whole. Oh, silent blood of Jesus. Grant the joy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Sally, from the top. Oh, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Oh, thank you, Lord.
Um, this morning, Keith woke me up. I don't know, he was praying, I think, half the night. But he woke me up this morning at about, I guess, 5 o'clock. And so I started praying, and I saw this in my spirit. And so I need to do this before we leave here tonight. Somebody here, I don't know if you had a kidney transplant or you donated one of your I don't know what the situation was. But anyway, you just have one kidney. And some minister has prayed for you before or someone has prayed for you before. I don't know. I don't want to add more to it than what I know. But anyway, uh, you just have had one kidney. Um, if you're in here tonight, would you stand up? One kidney. I, I, that's all I know is there, there's a person with one kidney. I don't know if it was... Um, a, 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 it seemed like it was a man. Would you come down here, please? Oh, the Lord's still healing. Whoa, you got time for him to heal some more? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, this doesn't matter, but just out of curiosity's sake, did you donate that kidney or did you lose that kidney? Uh, I lost it. Lost it, okay. Now, did somebody pray for you already in, one t- in times past or your mother or somebody... Somebody has prayed for you. Well, this is what the Lord showed me this morning as I was praying about that. Somebody had prayed for you about that kidney and uh, that you already had a kidney in there. And I told Keith this this morning and I could just see it just as plain as day that you had two kidneys. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it this side? side. So it would be turn and face me. So it would be this side. Okay. Um, It's like it's... um, the kidney is there, and it's like it's the size of a pea or a butter bean. And it's shriveled. Okay. Huh. He said so. And, and that's what I saw this morning. It was, it was really bitty, a little bitty, and I told Keith that this morning. Yeah. And that what we needed to do is not pray for it, but we needed to speak to it and tell it to, I even forget the words that I had this morning, to, uh, um, Okay, Lord, help me get the words that came to me this morning. Do you remember what the words was that I told you? Um, to grow up and function was the words that I had. So you just need to come up here, and you're going to speak to it. And this is what I saw, so I just have to do what I saw. And you need to face the crowd. I, I, that's all I know to do. And put your hand on it, wherever it is, and say, grow up, grow up. and function. And, function. and we're going to agree with you. Now, yeah. we'll say, okay, everybody point to it. Yeah. And say, grow up. Grow up. And function. And function. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, that's what I saw happen. Hallelujah. So I believe it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what I saw this morning laying in the bed. We stood here and we did that this morning. So that's what I saw. Amen. So I the left believe one swiveled up and the right one's enlarged. So. I didn't see anything about the right one, so I ain't got nothing about it. But I believe you're healed in Jesus' yeah. name. That's what yeah, I believe. So in Jesus name. That's what I saw this morning. And then the other thing that I had, that's all. You can go be seated because you're healed. Thank that's all I know. Amen. Healed. That's all I know. Then the other thing, the other night, a couple of Friday nights ago when we started doing, Keith started teaching on, um, what's the title of the sermon? Uh, moving of the Spirit. The moving of the Spirit. Yeah. Um, the Lord told me that, and I didn't even know we were going to be having this TBN thing, but when he, the very first night he had it, he said we were going to have a healing service and that we were supposed to have every person with dyslexia come down here and pray for him. So every person with dyslexia come down here. Every person that's ever had dyslexia or diagnosed diagnosed with with dyslexia, and he said there would be several. If you've been diagnosed with that. Now look at this. I never knew that. There would be that many people with dyslexia. Or diagnosed with it. Or diagnosed with it. Mm -hmm. Dyslexia. Easy thing for God to fix. Oh, so easy. Easy thing. Such an easy thing. Hallelujah. But it's, it's... this is something that you need to know too. Now, see, I've had that for weeks, for weeks, but I wasn't supposed to do it weeks ago because God knew who would be in the service tonight that he wanted to minister to. Yeah. 
Yeah. So don't just because you get something feel like you have to do it instantly. And the reason that I learned that was by watching Keith. Because when he'd get a song sometimes that the Lord would give him to sing in a service, I've seen him sit on a song that he had that he thought he was supposed to do for a service for sometimes a year. He'd get a song. And, and he might think it was supposed to go in this service. And I've seen him sit on it for a year. And then all of a sudden, Brother Hagen teach on that. And it'd be a year later. And it would, he'd say, see, that's where that fit. And he's had it for a year. You know? So you just have to wait for the perfect time until God deals with you that, that that's yes. when something is supposed to be yes. done. So, uh, Hallelujah. So. And this is for everybody watching uh, by TV and the great TBN family. If you've been diagnosed with dyslexia, Right now is the time to receive. You do not have to deal with that. You don't have to be hindered by that or restricted at all. This can be changed now, right now, in Jesus' name. And you know what? We need to get the kids, too. Any of the kids that's been diagnosed with dyslexia um, or that you know of, if you have kids that way, if you want to get them and bring them in here, we'll pray for them, too. Yeah, if they're in the building, get them, get them down here quickly while we minister to these. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm free. Let's sing something about being free. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Shukalev le mandi le ne le kle ba fe gombe de sandi le ba Oh yeah. Oh. Jesus set me free. I'm so free. buds now that's an odd one if you've lost your taste buds and you can't taste food if you can't taste food that keeps coming up in my spirit if that's you move quickly Just while they're getting the kids stand up come right on down if you've had you know you lost taste sensation something's wrong with your taste buds time to move right now right now thank you lord and that I'm was the so three glad. things that I had. So I just thought we'd flip that in while we're waiting on the kids. Okay. I'm so glad. Jesus Are you glad? I'm so glad. Makes me want to say. Glory. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Oh, Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Huh? All right, anybody else coming? Come quickly. There, is there nobody here that's had the sensation with your taste buds? Now taste I buds. Miss it. Need your taste buds healed. They sure come in handy right they after sure the service. Come in handy. You better. <laughs> if they're not right, don't come next week and say, well, you know, I've been having something wrong with my taste buds. Well, now's the time, right now. It's for you. Problems with your taste buds, get down here quickly, please. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's okay, Tom. He's okay. Hey, give me a. Let's pray for you, okay? All right. In the Father, name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. Lord, Jesus. let climate, let it be turned, let it be changed. In the name of Jesus, no more. Oh. Bright, bright, sharp, clear in Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Say I'm sharp. Okay. Oh, let's sing it. Good deal. 
by TV and internet you need to and you've never done this do it right now with us everybody close your eyes either affirm or reaffirm your faith say it right now Father God in the name of Jesus I believe I believe in you I believe in your son I believe Jesus died on the cross paid for all my sins I believe you've raised him from the dead. He's alive right now. King of kings. Lord of lords. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. Thank you for washing me, setting me free. Thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. If that's the first time you've ever said that or prayed that, you need to let us know. Call, write, TBN. You can call and write us. Tell other Christians. Get in a good church and serve God. There's nothing better. There's nothing more exciting on the face of the planet than God and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Healing has gone out. And do you believe you received? All right. You believe and you receive and then you hold fast to what you've received and you're not moved and it's yours and you walk in it and give all the glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Aren't we thankful for the ministers that came and and joined us tonight? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Doty. Thank you, Brother Richard. Thank you, Dino and Cheryl. Oh, we're so blessed and we're going to go singing I'm so glad. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. 